Hello and welcome to this video. This video is going to be a story on the restoration of a beautiful Valju 72 chronograph that I started in late 2019 and completed in the summer of 2020. And as most projects, um, this one started with a discovery. And one night, uh, very late, I was browsing um, eBay offers and I just came across a beautifully and very clean Valju 72 chronograph movement that was uh, with pushers, with dial and with hands, all from the original manufacturer. The only thing that it was missing was the case. And I believe that this watch originally had a gold case and at some point along the way that case got melted down. What remained was the movement. But the price was good. I think it was about $250 and I could not find any visual damages. Uh, I could also not see any missing parts. And in between two photos of the dial with the chronograph hand, I could see that the chronograph hand, the center hand, actually had moved. So that gave me the assurance that the watch in fact was running or still able to run, not only in the basic movement, but also right all the way through the chronograph function. And I said, well, I just, I'm just going to buy it and if, if I can't repair it, if I can't find parts, I still can sell it probably for the same amount of mon money for spare parts. Let's just take on this project. And while it was on its way, I was already trying to figure out where to find a new case and where to find new hands, tried to decide on a style with a bracelet. And I tried, I decided to go for a very traditional mid-century a restoration for a steel case with steel pushers, uh, steel uh, beads of rice bracelet um, to give it that really classic, clean, beautiful, big crown chronograph uh, style. Here in the photos you can see the movement the way it came to me, with the original movement holder, with the original pushers, and also with these, with this beautiful, very clean dial. The watch was originally made by Arsa, um, which is uh, short for Auguste Raymond in Switzerland. Throughout the times they built um, average watches, but also very high quality ones. And I assume that this was one of the more quality ones, um, just because of the fact that not only is it a very high grade movement, it, I mean, Valju 72 was also used in, in Rolex Daytona and Cosmograph chronographs. Not only that, but it also is very, and you will see that later on in the restoration project, the, the quality of the steel parts is superb. It's absolutely beautiful. There are beautiful finish and chamfers on parts. As you can see here, the movement is beautifully uh, gold-plated and it also is stamped for Arsa. So this, this movement was precisely produced for that manufacturer. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to keep the original dial and to, to keep the set at, as it was and just give it a new life uh, in a appropriate case with an appropriate bracelet. I found the original service manual and the original parts list from this movement online and was able to service the movement properly following the original guidance from the manual, from the disassembling uh, and service manual. So that was pretty cool. If I ever give this watch away, I will hand it out um, with the original service manual, uh, because I believe just this is a very cool thing to have, even if you're not the watchmaker who is servicing um, the movement. While I was disassembling the movement, I already ordered parts um, wherever I could find them. The case is a real new old stock steel case. It's a full steel case. It's not a plated one, I checked that. Uh, and I believe even the crown is full material, which is kind of rare for that time. I found it in Italy, <laughs> had it shipped over. I found new chronograph hands because I wanted to have a separated style on the dial where everything that shows you time you know, our minutes and the running seconds hand are one color and everyone that indicates the chronograph function, so the center chronograph hand and the minute counter have a different color. And I found a beautiful uh, blue chronograph set for a value 72 and I added that. And I also found a beautiful old steel beads of rice bracelet. 
The dial was in absolutely beautiful condition and I did absolutely nothing to it. I, it's absolutely untouched. And what I could not figure out was um, the manufacturer who created the dial. Um, I found a stamp on the on the bottom side of the dial, but I couldn't find any any matching producers in Switzerland or elsewhere. So if you if you know that kind of stamp and you know who made it, just let me know in the comments below. What was absolutely amazing to me is the quality of the parts and the finish of the parts. Even parts that are stamped out of material to create them are finished after that. And right down to every single wheel, right to the wheels that you don't see, the finish on this watch is absolutely beautiful and it's absolutely amazing. And I believe that this watch, because it probably was a gold watch, was never really worn in its time. Um, I could not find any any marks of wear anywhere in the movement. All the dirt that was on the movement probably just came from the time it was sitting uh, without a case. And it was running when I got it, and here are a couple of shots. This was, in fact, the first time I was working on a chronograph. First assembly, I put it back together. The chronograph was not really running, and it's still not really running right now. And I probably will take apart the entire chronograph module again. Maybe I even do another video about it, because when I was working on this watch, I had to focus so hard that I decided not to take video clips of it, because it was just stressing me out so much. Here's a picture of the finished watch, and I'm, I'm really happy that I was able to give this beautiful mechanism another chance and a new shell. This is, this is not ordinary stuff. People will say, yeah, there are millions of Belgium 72, and there are, like, people will say that even Rolex Daytonas with 72 movements are not that rare. Say about it what you want, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm still a little bit afraid to wear it now that I know how complex and delicate this mechanism is. In between that I have another project I can I can spoiler you right now and it's going to be a 7009 Seiko 5 from 1989 that I bought also on eBay and that is in dire need of a clean and service and a couple of replacement parts and this is going to be the next project. So Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward to the next one. And so long. I see you in the next one.